everybody, welcome to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. Hey, welcome to the Linux Cast, guys. We're back, second episode of the year. Uh, two in a row, we're on a streak. My goal is to do at least one more episode than we did last year. So, we did 37 last year, so we should do pretty good. So, anyways, that's beside that. You guys are going to have to live with it. I've been up since like 7.30 this morning. Had to get up and shovel snow and... There's just not enough sleep in this brain. So I'm going to be a little weird today. I'm just going to point that out. So anyway, so this is the Linux cast. We talk about Linuxy things. That's what we do here. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about NixOS. Now, I, before we jump into the FOSS of the week thing, I, I know what you're probably thinking, Matt. Didn't you guys just do a NixOS video in like December? Yes. Yes, we did. We did, in fact, do that. But at that point, neither one of us had used it for very long. And we've talked about it, you know, off camera and in, in various places over the course of the last couple of weeks. And Tyler's been on it for a few weeks now, and I've been using it for a few months. And I figured it was we can sit down and have a more in-depth, more informed conversation about it than we did back in when we did that episode back in December or November, whenever it was. So I think that that's going to be okay. So if, if you are not interested in NixOS and you're like, God, all this NixOS content is just horrible. Talk about Arch for the love of all it's holy. First of all, no. <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about Arch. And no, Josh, we're not going to talk about Gen 2 either. Uh, OpenSUSE is open for discussion. We can talk about OpenSUSE. But anyway, <laughs> anyways, we're going to talk about next. But before we do that, we're going to jump into our weekend FOSS. So, Tyler, what you been up to this week in open source? Well, actually, it it is definitely related to open source, but it's related to the main topic. I've been uh, massively improving my NixOS flakes or flake and kind of streamlining it because before, if you wanted to have like my NixOS configuration, you'd go and like pull down, run a build script that would copy over stuff, do a whole bunch of things. And then when now the way that my flake is, is all you have to do is copy over your hardware configuration or generate one and put it in and replace the default like hardware configuration that I have for my systems and then rerun the flake command. Uh, but before you would have to go through also into the flake.nix, make sure you change your username, you know, host name or no, your username. Then you'd have to go into the home manager, change your username and stuff there. Then go into the workstation configuration file, change your username, configuration, all that kind of stuff there. Now I've kind of streamlined it in, inside of my flake.nix. I have variables that you can set for your username, host name, get username and get email. And I think I've, I may have added even one or two more. So pretty much all of the variables that you might need to change for your system, I'm trying to put inside of the flake to just keep it simpler. So someone just has to clone my my flake and then change the variables inside of that flake.nix, put in their hardware configuration inside of the laptop or workstation config, whichever one they want to run, and then run the command and you're done. Some people... I have had uh, one person that had some issues, but most most people that I know of that have tried my flake have had it work and be just fine. I know uh, quite a few, so that's what I've been up to. And if you happen to be watching this and you're somebody who has had issues with my flake and you know you're you're struggling, just reach out to me. I'd be more than willing to talk with you and help you out with any issues you got. No problem. Also, if you're not about this NixOS content, definitely go. De definitely do not go check out my YouTube channel. There's a lot of NixOS videos being published and like uploaded right now. So, so Tyler's yeah. going to be the NixOS guy. He's going to get called out on Mental Outwall, and then a week later, won't be using mm -hmm. NixOS anymore. <laughs> that is exactly how it'll work. Because <laughs> you know that because it's happened before. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best thing ever. <laughs> get, get, let's get shouted out by the one of the largest YouTubers that does this kind of content, and then uh, not do the content he shouted you out for <laughs> anymore. Yeah. That's great. So, it, like for anybody who doesn't know, like Mental Outlaw shout me, shouted me out for my Open BSD content right after I had switched away from using Open BSD. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, this is the best thing ever. Uh, all right. So, me, I have been having. Window Manager ADD is the best way to describe this. So, 
So, for those of you guys who don't know, Darth Vader, who's in the chat, has challenged me to use the same color scheme for a year. It's the most challenging challenge I've ever had in my life. And you wouldn't think so. And I was like, it's just, you, you, you got to, I got to choose the color scheme that I use. And he didn't even choose it for me. I chose it for myself. And you think that, you know, easy peasy. A lot of people do that. Well, not me. I change my color scheme like two or three times a day. I think I talked about this last week. But because I haven't been able to actually be happy with, you know, switching around my, the look and feel of my dead stop, I've been having a hard time with the window manager that I'm using. So I've been trying to find a, a different window manager because I've been using Xmonad now for a couple months and I still, uh, I'm still very iffy on Haskell, but I'm getting used to it, but I, I wanted to try something different. So, you know, I, I spent an entire day just for fun, really. I, uh, I spent an entire day patching DWM. Didn't even plan on using it. I just wanted to, you know, patch it because i'm a nerd <laughs> I, I did I, I did that i got it up to 30 patches before i couldn't go any further and now i know like everybody's like i'll oh, just use flexi patch you can add as many patches as you want well it's it's more it's not fun just selecting a whole bunch of ones and zeros i wanted to actually patch it so i did that and then i messed around with hyperland for a little while broke hyperland good very good i like broke as in no longer working so the <laughs> that like I was gonna give that a try, but ended up breaking that and and much too lazy to fix it. So th then I went to so uh, uh, Nuggy Bust in the Discord was talking on the Linux user group that we did this past week. More on that later. And we did. He said, "Well, why don't you just use i3?" And I was like, "Well, because it doesn't do workspaces like Xmonad or Qtile." He goes, "Well, I think I can fix that." So he did a he wrote an entire script system for it to start working like Xmonad and Qtile when it comes to workspaces. So I used Qtile for, or for I used so I used i3 for about I don't know, 12 hours or so, and I was like, "You know what? Some of the the themes for Polybar that I have would actually work okay with Xmobar. So I went back to Xmonad, which is where I was trying to get away from to begin with. So I've used like six different window managers in the last week. It's not great. <laughs> anyway, so that that's that's that. The other thing that I did this week is that we had our first Linux cast sponsored Linux user group on Thursday. We had probably about 20 people show up or so. People came in and out, so it's a little hard to know who exactly all showed up but if, if, if you did show up thank you for showing it was a wonderful time we had a, a great time we talked everything from distros to ai to some you know back some inside baseball when it comes to youtube and stuff like that it was a really good time and if you want to so we're going to be doing that twice a month from going on so we'll be doing it the second thursday of every month around 11 o'clock p.m. or a.m. Eastern time, 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. And then to catch the people who can't come in the middle of the day, uh, we're going to be doing it every fourth Friday at 8.15 p.m. Eastern time. All that's on the Discord. All the information is on the Discord. So if you want to join us for that, you'll have to come and join the Discord. I know not a lot of uh, some people don't care for Discord, but if you... Uh, want to join the Linux user group that I'm sponsoring or that we're doing, uh, you have to don't join that. So, and it was very fun. So uh, I, I, I will say it, it is, if, if you're not a big fan of discord, it's okay. Make a throwaway account and just come in for it. It was very good. I was almost late to work because of that Linux user group. We it's could definitely, have, good. we could have easily talked for many, many hours, but my, my limit of sitting here for is about two hours and then I have to get up and move around so I can do actual work. But like I was so distracted with the conversation, I couldn't even say like, oh, bye. Like I, I literally went up oh, and then just yeah, exited the well, discord. Like, I had to was, leave for work. Yeah. One minute he was there and then he was gone. It was like poof. <laughs> <laughs> he was gone. Anyways, it was it was very, very fun. If you want to join the link for the discord will be in the description of both the live stream and the video that goes up on Monday, as well as the audio version that will go up on Monday as well. So check that out if you want to join us. So that's what I've been doing this week in open source and all that stuff. So we'll move on to the main topic. So like I said, we've talked about NixOS many times before, but I wanted to see if we can't get, you know, kind of dig a little deeper this time and talk about it because I posted a short yesterday of us talking about Nix from the last podcast. And we made a comment about it not being a Linux distro. And boy, did that piss a lot of people off. 
Yes. It, like it made a lot of people very, very angry. Like oh, it uses the Linux kernel, therefore ipso facto. <laughs> I, like, pardon me while I, you know, become a nerd. Yes, it uses the Linux kernel, but we, we made this comment, and I kind of want to talk a little bit more about it, get more in depth about NixOS just a little bit, because it is one of those distros that has become at the forefront of the Linux community, and I think that it's important for us to talk about that when it happens. So, Tyler, you've been using NixOS for the like what the last like three four weeks now almost a month yeah it, we, it, it, i think it has been a month let's been just everybody pause for just a second and acknowledge that tyler the one of the top three distro hoppers that i know has been using the same distro for a month it's insane <laughs> it's like it's almost impossible i would have bet money against it that's you know so well it there's been a lot to check out about it and uh, i i am glad that we're starting off on this note because i i actually had a conversation with four other people last night about exactly what we're talking about whether or not linux nix os is a linux distro and i think we talked about it for quite a while and i think we all came to the we all agreed that it was kind of a semantics argument where yes by all by all definition and technically nix os is a regular old linux distro i get it 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 has all of the points to be a regular linux distro and it is by definition a linux distro the i i think we we dived a little deep in the conversation and in, in talking about how nix os was the problem with calling it a Linux distro is th that when you do that, typically people group in other distributions in that statement, like Gentoo, Arch, and other ones. And it's Nix OS is it's so different that when you do that, people obviously are led to believe that it's going to function somewhat similar to those distributions, and it doesn't. Almost every other Linux distribution is, I believe the term is called imperative, where you actually run commands or you have a software GUI that runs commands in the background and those commands install programs. On NixOS, you don't do that. Like everything is declarative inside of files. You can run commands and install programs, but typically you're doing that inside of a, as far as I know, like again, I'm not a freaking NixOS developer or someone who's been using it for a very long time and is very well versed in all the definitions but from what i can tell a nix shell and a nix environment are like semi virtualized environments like your nix shell is a shell that you can use for development but it's not it's not system wide and it's not going to be there all, like all the time same thing with like a nix environment so these are separate places on your system than your entire system config so like when you go and run commands to install something you're doing it inside of a separate shell than your main one that your system actually runs from so the next time you reboot or do a logout or something like that you're all, all that stuff that you just did is to most people completely gone mm -hmm. like i believe within a nix environment you can just pull it back up like but you you still have to re-enter that environment to have access to all those programs you installed so like it makes it, it makes it very difficult to talk about nix os like every other linux distribution because obviously that leads people down a bad path where they treat it like every other linux distro and then are confused as hell as why it's not working properly you know compared comparatively to the others so the way I okay, so here's the funny thing, thing is we always talk about beginners Linux distros, right? I mean, you know, Ubuntu, Zora, and Linux Mint or whatever. But in, in reality, there's not a beginners Linux distro. If you if you're brand new to Linux and you want to go run Gentoo, you can go run Gentoo. The documentation is very good. There's a lot of people out there that can help you if you get lost. You know, there's a lot of tutorials and all this stuff. And if we're being honest about it, installing Gentoo is not really that difficult. And once you get it up and running, it 
basically works like any other Linux distro. Yes, you compile everything. Yes, there's use, use flags and stuff like that. So those things are a little bit different. But, you know, the Etsy directory is where you'd expect the Etsy directory to be. You can manage your dot files the way that you want to manage your dot files or whatever. E everything works. You, you can take basically everything you would learn running Gen 2 and use it on Arch or Ubuntu or whatever. Obviously, there are going to be some things that are different, but for the most part, those two, the, all those things work exactly the same. So, if you want to be a beginner, be, a beginner, if you're a beginner and you want to use whatever distro you want to use, basically all of the, no, no matter which one you choose, you're going to be learning the skills you would need to be able to transfer those to another distro should you decide to distro hop. So if you start with Arch and you learn all the things that you want need to learn about Arch and you end up switching to OpenSUSE or you know Ubuntu or whatever, you have gain, gained skills that you need in order to to you know use those distros as well while you were running Arch. The same can't of all the distros, the same cannot be said for NixOS, right? You if you start on NixOS, which you can do, it's very easy to install. It's not as hard as it used to be. You can use the Calamari's installer, and if you can suss out enough from the really crappy documentation so that you can actually... Ah, thank you, buddy. Hey. <laughs> I, I agree. You tell him, buddy. <laughs> Any, anyways, if you can suss out enough from the documentation where you can install applications and just use it like a regular distro that way, uh, you can do those things and you'll probably be able to learn, but you can't tr take those skills that you're learning on NixOS and easily transfer them to another distro because they work differently. Like you install software differently, like you said, you know, you do updates differently. There's different tools. You do, you manage your DOF files differently. Everything is slightly different, especially if you start learning more about your root file system and stuff like that, because they're not the same. They're just completely different. Now, those files do exist. You just have to learn about the NixOS store file directories and stuff like that. They're all there. They're just in a different spot. They're all it's a crazy mess of symlinks, basically, is what you, what we're looking at here. It, it's really, really weird, and they've done it in a completely different way than everything else has done it. Uh, and that is when, when I say all this stuff, to, you, you've experienced this when you, when you say something that is absolutely true, but it comes off in a negative light. People think that you're saying that what you're talking about is bad. Like people think that yeah. I hate NixOS. Like I don't hate NixOS. I think NixOS is just different. And I, well, my, me personally, I've been using it now since like November, or maybe even October. I don't personally see the benefits to running it. I don't think that it's bad. I, I just think that it's different. And I'm not sure that it deserves the hype that some users, you know, heap on it. But that's a conversation we've really kind of already had. But the, I, I think my biggest issue when answering the question, is it actually a Linux distro, is that just like you said, if you call it a Linux distro, then people assume that it works like a Linux distro and it does not do so. Now, the thing is that do people really make that assumption? Because if the thing is about me, me personally, as I assume people are morons, uh, like people are just absolutely stupid. To, to, if I look at you, I just assume that you're dumb. And then you have you you have to you have to prove to me otherwise that you're not dumb. I know it sounds like an asshole thing to do, and it is an asshole thing to do. But over almost forty years of life, I've become very cynical about people in general. For the most part, I think people are stupid. But that's a that's a, some colored glasses of the way that I look at the world. Right? It's not actually true. Most people are actually fairly smart. If you're going to install NixOS, chances are you know that it's different, right? You probably know that it doesn't work the same way that other things do. And if you don't, you're going to find out very, very fast. Like, you, like you're going to find out within the first few minutes of using it that it's different. So I, yeah, I don't think well, that I... Go ahead. I, I, I do think there is a valid point. Like, I... I don't think it has anything to do with whether or not someone's stupid, but I do like, uh, I do like your perspective on it. Treat, uh, treat any, go into any situation like you might be talking and explaining something to a moron. Cause that's probably the way that you don't overlook any small things and, you know, just don't, don't give someone proper advice that might need it. So like, I get that the, the thing with like it, the problem with bringing it up in 
in common conversation with other distributions is I do think people, I don't think it has anything to do with whether you're not you're smart or anything. I, I think when we bring up Nix OS in something like comparing it to Arch, like pe- people do assume on some level that it's going to work similarly. Like, cause, uh, the reason Arch gets brought up around NixOS a ton is because with the Nix package manager, you have pretty much everything, if not everything, that's in the AUR. So most people who are running Arch stay on Arch because of the AUR. And then if you wanted to move to something like Nix, it'd work out great because you're not going to lose out on all those packages or have to go and get them from somewhere else or build them yourself. Nothing like that. So it gets brought up a lot. And then when people go in to try Nix OS, like, I mean, things aren't even put in, there's a term called Nixifying and like your whole systems moved around. things are in different places. Most things are referenced from the Nix store. And so when you're going to look for a binary and you're finding out that everything is coming back in this Nix store with this huge, like UUID looking hash, you're like, what the heck is going on? Like, so I, I think it's one of those things where there's a, I don't know. It can it can be deceptive when talking about it with other distributions, and vi- and very much so because, I mean, Nix is very different than something like Arch, but the package availability is pretty much the same. So, like you can you like you know like that's kind of the problem with Nix. It's like you'll reference other things because it it has similar like things that people might be looking for who are using something else. But like the underlying concept and mentality around how Nix works is, I mean, fundamentally different from all the others. So, so kind of a problem. My problem with a lot of this stuff is, so do you remember when elementary OS was really a thing? I mean, it's still around, obviously, but very few people yes. actually use it. One of my biggest problems has with 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 elementary OS was that they always they had this dedicated design thing, and they they tempted developers into developing applications that basically worked best on elementary OS. So you had a whole bunch of applications like Planner and a few others that I don't really remember that really, if you wanted to run them in their proper form, you'd have to do so on elementary OS. And one of my arguments against that thing, despite, you know, developers being able to make more money by doing so was that it ruined the openness of Linux, where if I want to run an application, on one system, I can then distro hop and run the same application and it looks and works basically the same. When, when you have when you have things that run only on a certain you know distro and it's not easily transferable from that distro to other distros, it ruins the interstate highway feeling of your of the the whole ecosystem of linux to me because you know you can if you want want some use something one way on one on one you can easily use the same thing on another because they're basically the same they're just doing things in slightly different ways with nix os for, for me feels that way you can use nix and learn all you can about nix and it's not even just about the knowledge that you can't therefore transfer over to you know another di- distro the, it's not as if you can't go and learn how other distros do things. People can, you know, there's enough hard drive space in your brain where you can learn how to do Nix things and you can go learn Gen 2 and Linux from scratch if you want to. You can do both things. It's fine. But because you have dedicated yourself to using things like Home Manager and Flix or whatever, you can't easily take those things with you to another distro. You can, but it is going to require quite a bit of work, you know, because they're not easily they're not easily transferable because Nix does things so differently that you basically have to sculpt your workflow and your organization around the way it does things. And the organization of other distros are is just different. So it, f- my biggest problem with Nix isn't that it's you know bad or that it does things you know, in a certain way or, you know, whatever. It's just that it, here's going to, here's a, here's a metaphor or whatever that is going to piss some people off. It reminds me of Emacs, you know, Emacs is really good. And I had to hold my nose while I said that, but if you spend a lot of time in Emacs and you get really 
delve deep into the e Emacs ecosystem. You know, you get really into org mode and org agenda and Rome and all of this stuff, right? You get used to it, but all of a sudden you decide for whatever reason, you're going to switch to Vim. Getting out of Emacs mode is going to be really hard because all of your files are in org and guess what Vim doesn't do? Org. Yes, you can, if you put effort into it, take those org files, transfer them over into a format that Vim understands, or I'm, I'm actually probably sure that there's a Vim plugin that does it, but whatever, you know, out of the box, Vim's not going to see those things. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of like a walled garden. It's not really a walled garden. You can take this stuff out if you want to, but it takes extra effort to take that stuff out of Emacs and put it somewhere else so you can actually use it. That's my problem with Emacs is that it feels like it's sucking you into using Emacs as much as possible. Nix is kind of that way. Like if you're going to use Nix, kind of like you have, Tyler, you've fallen for the Nix stuff and you are doing Nix in the way Nix is supposed to do. You're doing flakes and you got home manager and all that stuff. And you've admitted that it's completely different than everything you've done before. The more you get into it and the more you get into doing that stuff, the harder it's going to be to one day decide you're going to pack up your shit and just go to Ubuntu because you're no longer using the same, the, the you're no longer doing the things the same as you did when you were using a traditional distro. So that ability to move around, I think, is what Nix hinders. And that bugs me a little bit. Now, obviously, it doesn't bug everybody because most people aren't like me. They don't say, well, where's my next sister going to be? Most people just say, hey, next is home. It's where I'm going to be forever. So it doesn't matter if I only know this way, one way of doing things. So it's... And I, I don't disagree with that perspective at all. Like, you... That I think that's a natural thing that's going to happen with Nix because it is a completely different way of approaching everything. And if you do it long enough, you, it's going to be really hard to going back to not having simple config files that set up your system for you, manage your entire like you know user like like I have a file that make that makes sure uh, XDG um, the XDG user dirs and everything is all set up and created like that's just inside of a config file. So I don't ever have to run that command or remember that that's something I need to do. It just is done for me. And I could easily see myself in two years, like if I'm still using Nix a daily driver on most of my machines, installing something else like, you know, Arch, and then being like, oh yeah, that's right. I have to go and do that. Like, hell, I easily know how to install XDG user DIRs and run the command. If I haven't done it in two years, I might have to go and Google it. And there, I mean, that's just a small example of like what exactly what could happen. So I, I definitely agree with that perspective. And my thing though is I don't think it's really a problem. I, I, I think it definitely is annoying uh, if you if you do want to change down the line and you've gotten really ingrained in NixOS. I could definitely see it being annoying. I don't find it to be a problem mainly because if you're going if you're going to look for configs inside of someone who's using NixOS most people that I found that are using NixOS most of their programs are configed in the their regular config files that are just sourced by home manager and put where they need to be on the system every rebuild so those config files for that program like i have sway and c neo fetch like you know hyperland all of those config files are in regular config files that you would have in any other system it's just it's not put in a dot config folder like because i don't have to like i i have a config folder with those things in there like my hyperland folder is, just, is instead of being called hyper is hyperland and then home manager takes that entire hyperland config hyperland folder and puts it in dot config h y p r and puts it on the home system so like for me if you're not using nix os a lot of the times you can still go and look at someone's configuration for their system and get you know their rice of sway and see or you know, like whatever you're looking for on their system, if it's not the entire thing. 
So to me, that's not that big of a problem. However, I do totally understand if you just want to replicate someone's entire system, but you don't want to do it with Nix OS, it's, it's really, really horrible to go through Nix OS flake and try to figure out what's going on. If you have no interest in Nix, you have no interest in Nix OS. Like you, you just don't care. You want to see what they're using because with Nix OS, you're using the Nix Pro language to essentially build and configure your system that can really be a pain so i get that i like i i do but also that's kind of the whole point of nix in the first place if you do want to just replicate someone's system that that, that's literally what nix os is built for so you probably should be interested in nix or at the very least try to use nix os build that person's configuration and then go through using that config and see what's going on. I, I don't know. That's my personal opinion on it. So what you're saying is that in order for me to steal some of the rices off from Unix porn, I'm going to have to install Nix OS on my machine in order to do that. Huh? No, no, no. I mean, like, like my thing is if you want to replicate their entire system, like everything, Pro that's probably going to be the best way of going about it. Like definitely. But also if you just want, if you just want someone's like, you know, I'm trying to think like way bar configuration, normally that's going to be put inside of regular old config files. They haven't been put into Nix programming language and then are interpreted into those config files or whatever on the system. Normally, that's how it's done. I picked a horrible example there because I'm using Raybar and I've put it in my home manager. So, yeah. Okay. So, for those of us, I mean, I've been using Nix for a while, but I haven't really delved deep into Flakes. Um, buddy, would you please explain to us what Flakes are? <laughs> He'll be here eventually. So, I'm going to ask him what, what, if he can explain what Flakes are to the, to the rest of us. <laughs> Once he gets back from letting Buddy out the out the door. <laughs> All right. So Tyler, I was going to ask you. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Can, explain to us in simple new user terms what a flake actually is. Okay. A, f <laughs> a flake is a very easy one because I'm, I'm trying to like I. I could easily in seconds have the flake page open and read the actual definition of it. So if anyone wants to learn the technical definition and how a flake is like written, comprised and all that stuff, NixOS has a page on it. It explains it pretty well, but the general idea of a flake is it is a system of controlling where your system pulls stuff from and also al allows you to have multiple configurations for a system in one place that you can choose with a co with a flag every time you rebuild your system. So regularly on NixOS, you would run the NixOS rebuild switch command, and that's going to rebuild your system from the slash, et slash Etsy slash NixOS folder that comes with your NixOS install. With Flakes, you can enable Flakes, rebuild your system, and then you can get anybody's flake out there or build your own. And when you run that fl that rebuild command again, you add dash dash flake, give it the flake directory. And then you can also specify if you have multiple different NixOS configurations inside of your flake, like, like I do, you can do hashtag laptop, hashtag workstation to build out different configurations that you want. And you can, and it can all be comprised inside of one Git repo. Flakes also has another feature, and this can mess some people up, so I should go ahead and say this. Flakes is actually meant to be for you to be using it inside of a Git repo, so you can easily pull it down on other systems. And your Flake will not be able to use files and reference files that are outside of the Git working tree. So if you if you add like a config file for let's say your vimrc and you haven't get committed that vimrc when you try to rebuild it will actually fail and tell you like it can't find that file or whatever it's because it's outside of your git working tree 
So that's kind of a feature to help you from adding files and then rebuilding your system, everything working good, and then forgetting to push your Git files and someone else pulling it down or you pulling it down on a different machine later and it being broken. So, but at, at the end of the day, all a flake is, is it has a description inside of it and that is completely useless. You can, it's essentially just where you name flake, like for mine, it's just Zany OS. Then you have your inputs and that, that tells the flake, where is it getting the Nix packages from? You can also do like hyperland. So like I, I pull hyperland straight from source. You, you just define where the inputs for the system are coming in at. And then you have the other section that contains, or excuse me, of your inputs and then your outputs. And that's for your actual configuration. So if I want to run my workstation configuration, a laptop configuration, eventually I'm going to have my file server configuration, all that kind of stuff. So essentially a flake it manages all that stuff. And then also every time you like another feature of is it, it builds a lock file. So it locks where you're pulling your packages from everything like set in stone. So there's no chance of potential breakages later on. At least it should lower the chances of any breakages later on when rebuilding the system. So that's kind of the idea of flakes. Raise your hand Very in the chat way. if you're more confused now than you were before he started talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. I un I understand the gist of it. it. I I think that when it comes to that kind of stuff, is that Nix has the ability to bamboozle me more, and this has been my experience throughout the entire four months of using it. It has the ex the. It has more of a possibility of confusing me on how it does things than any other tool on Linux that I've ever used. And well, not, not only because it just does things differently, but because it has these extra, like, like it has Home Manager, and while well, you have to learn how to use Home Manager, it has Flakes. And I, you know, I, I haven't used Flakes because I still, <laughs> I've had a hard time getting my head around what they actually are. And I need, and it's one of the reasons why I can't do the long-term review until I can actually, you know, learn what those things are. And, and there's all these things, and they're each individual pieces, and they all go together. And you look, I just look at them as a whole, and like this is not meant for me mr dumbass i don't I, like, well, I don't get it you 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 bring up a good point and that's that's why i didn't really like i made a video talk using flakes at all and part of that reason was you already have like like let's talk about it in a bunch of like puzzle pieces you've already got nix os's like core the configuration.nix hardware configuration.nix to worry about so like you've already got to figure out how Nix OS manages your system. And then on top of that, I'm also already have added on another pit puzzle piece of home manager, which slots right into configuration and then builds out and manages my home directory in a lot of ways for me. And so most, most people assume you have to use home manager. You, you don't have to use home manager at all. You could completely leave it by the wayside. Don't need it. I, I like it. And it's got a lot of features, but that's beyond the. So I've, I'm already using that. Then I add in flakes on top of it. that's a whole. And then also there's the whole added problem of Nix OS is really just. You can think about it this way it's like building out your system as if you were building out, like, you know, a Rust project, whatever. You're you're essentially doing the same thing, but with a Nix programming language. And then the binary that you're trying to build being your actual Linux system, your bootable Linux system. So essentially like you're, you're, you also have to deal with the fact that you're using a programming language to build your system. And m most people don't care. Like there's a lot of people out there that have tried Nix OS that don't care about program. So You've got a programming mentality with like with extra utilities added on the system. It, the layer of complexity that I have going on right now with my system is, in my opinion, it's too high for most people. Like, and, and that's not me saying most people are dumb. I'm just saying most people probably don't want the complexity of a configuration that I have. Most people probably. I, I would assume so. That's my assumption. So I. I, I definitely see the argument for flakes because it's com it's an added layer of complexity. Same thing with Home Manager, and you don't have to. 
the problem is there's a lot of cool things you can do with both of those that people probably would be interested in with, but it's hard to dive in from scratch. Like if you're new to NixOS and you just pull down my configuration, the amount of things that you might have to learn and work through is annoying. I, I could definitely be honest about saying that. So, I mean, <laughs> would you agree? Yeah, NixOS is annoying, but the, their users are more annoying. So, <laughs> so I, I'm going to get a lot of shit in this video because, or in this podcast because I've called everyone dumb. <laughs> I know, like, I just assume that you're a moron. And then like, oh, you just said that, did he? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I did just say that. Uh, no, don't no, get me wrong. I am also one of those people. I'm a dumbass. So uh, I, I fit right in with everybody. Uh, but I've also made a lot of fun of of Nick's OS users over the course of the last few months because I think because it does things so di there, there's this thing in the Linux community we've talked about this before where if your distro is hard to install or does things slightly differently that could be construed to make it seem like it's bet a better way of doing things you're automatically if you're a user of that almost contractually obligated to tell other people that you did it. So if you install Gen 2, you're going to tell people that you installed Gen 2. You're just gonna. I, I mean, there's no one who has ever installed Gen 2 who hasn't told someone that, hey, I installed Gen 2 last night. <laughs> you know, they, they did that. It's almost guaranteed. Arch Linux used to be exactly the same way when Arch was hard to install. I use Arch, by the way. That's the reason why that exists. The... Uh, Probably, I mean, Linux from scratch is so rare for people to actually install. It's not really a, a meme because no, very few people actually do it. But if it were more, you know, popular, more people would say that, right? So, NixOS has so many things that it does differently. And when people learn how to do those things, like you just sit there for five minutes explaining what flakes were. If you went through the process of learning what a flake was and you're using flakes and you've discovered how to use home manager and using home manager and you're doing all this stuff with Nix and it just seems so cool, you got to tell everybody about it. And yes. so over the course of the last year, and the, the, weir the weirdest thing has happened because NixOS is not a new thing. It's been around for 10, 15 years. It's been around for a long time. But over the course of the last year, it has become the hot shit. And it's yeah. it's weird because none of this stuff is new. It's been around for a long time. It's weird that it, all of a sudden now, it's become the big thing. And I, I would like... I mean, I can understand the psychology behind wanting to tell people when you've done something cool. I literally spent five minutes at the beginning of this podcast talking about how I patched DWM for 10 hours straight trying to do that. That's how much of a nerd I am. So I understand you guys. <laughs> You're my people. <laughs> okay. This is my tribe. I understand it. What I would like to understand is why now? Like, I don't, I don't get why at this, like, is there some marketing guy at the company who's behind NixOS who has decided all of a sudden that now is the time for NixOS to shine? Like, did you guys know this, that bacon didn't used to be a big thing? Like, yes, every, bacon has always been a thing, but there was a period of the last f probably five or seven years or so where bacon has become huge like they made bacon ice cream and bacon popcorn and literally put bacon on and everything toothpaste. right and bacon and toothpaste right so oh. that's a marketing thing right so i'm wondering if there's like a nix os marketer dude who's who's counting out there and said hey you should use nix os because it's cool or something I, it, it's i'm just I think wondering that is why, a good point why not i i i've been wondering that because the Weirdest thing was, I can't remember when I did it, but when I first checked out Nix OS, I installed it. I got like, you know, I got all the programs I needed installed. I mean, I had a working system and I think, I, I can't remember if I did videos on it at all or just talked about it. But from what I can remember, the first time I checked out Nix OS, now, it, and mind you, this is still when I was like putting out my dot files for everyone else to use and everything. The first time I checked it out, I, I was like, it's got a lot of features and a lot of stuff and it works fine. But most of the features it has just aren't for me. Like, I don't, I don't think I'll really take advantage of most of the features. I'm not really interested in them. Like Nick shells, Nick's environments still haven't used them. Have, 
to this to this day have no reason to dive into a Nick's environment or Nick's shell. I have no idea. And those are big features of Nick's. But the first time I tried it out, I I did the same thing I'm doing now, not checking out some major features that Nick's OS has. And this time I'm loving it and really enjoying diving into all the different aspects of it. And the first time I just wasn't interested. I I don't know why all of a sudden I am. And I, and I got to be honest, now that I've been into Nix and have talked with a lot of people, a lot of the other people have, you know, over the past year or so have been, have become Nix OS users and really love it. I don't know what it is, but it seems like very recently people have started adopting Nix and it is booming. It ha- And uh, to your point of maybe there's a marketing dude who's like at the forefront of this or b- working behind the scenes. What's changed about Nix OS Market? The website, I think, looks the exact same as last time. Nothing's changed. What's happening? <laughs> Everybody's interested. I, it may have something to do with Nix OS versus Arch. Like everybody's like tired of doing new things in arch and well no and, and i'll say the thing is it, arch became too easy there's an arch install script now all you got to do is you, you can install arch in, in 10 seconds it doesn't take any effort anymore therefore you can't brag about it and you know, it's no longer impressive when someone says i use arch well who cares but if you say i use nix oh you use something special do you you know it, it's the same thing still happens with Gentoo. If you if you're a Gentoo user, you get looked at a little bit differently because you put up with a lot of shit from Gentoo. Yeah. You know, you 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 have talent that regular mere mortals don't have. Moss in the chat said something about de- developers started using Nix, and that's the reason why. And and that is a good explanation that more and more developers have come around to using Nix because of the development tools that Nix offers, the virtual environments and 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 shells and stuff like that. And because of that, more people tend to follow the lead of some developers that they like. So if you're a fan of Martin Wimpress or whatever, you know he he now works for Nix OS, and you're gonna follow him around because that's a lot, a lot of people do you know and, and it's been the same with a lot of uh, you know other developers who have started using nix and they take their communities kind of with them like it happens to me too i'm not a developer i started using open all of a sudden like a third of my discord server now uses open you know also yeah. sticker <laughs> <laughs> can't help it it's in the contract well, <laughs> I, I do think i do think you have a very good point I, I would like to say though that for for those people who are calling Nix OS the new Arch, I, I I don't completely disagree with that sentiment. However, I do want to say a big difference between Nix OS and the community that you find with Arch is I have the only people that I have seen use the term RTFM when in a conversation about Nix is in relation to Nix and Arch. Okay. Oh, no. oh, the oh, Nix. Oh. <laughs> the, 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 uh, I'm sorry to, to, to cut you off there, but the reason why, exactly what you're going to say, the reason yeah. why they can't point to the documentation and say, go read the documentation is because the documentation is shit. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Arch wiki is awesome. <laughs> I think that's probably why. Sorry. Nix <laughs> might be better for, like, look, if you're somebody who, as much as we might not like this mentality, it would be intellectually dishonest to say that this mentality doesn't exist. There are people out there that do want to just use something because they know it's difficult and it most people won't go and do it and they can brag about it. I will say the advantage that NixOS has over Arch is those people can't nearly be as much of an arsehole or a problem because, well, you can't just tell someone to go and read the NixOS documentation. And it's not because the documentation is completely crap. Most things are actually documented, but it is organized in the most horrific way you could possibly imagine. It, there are things that should be on one page because it's about a flake, but isn't there because it's, a, it's used as an example in some other way. It's ridiculous. So it... 
you can you can go and find documentation for a lot of things, if not everything on Nix. The problem is, is everyone everyone inside that all right, look, every single person I've talked to inside the Nix OS community has agreed that it is cruel and unusual punishment to just send someone hunting for the info they need inside of the documentation or on the web. So when it comes to Nix OS, no matter what, the thing that I have ex- experienced myself, especially over this past past month, has been people being overwhelmingly positive and willing to help me address issues in pretty much anything that I've found. I mean, I literally had someone do that yesterday or the day before, like walk through how I could fix something. And like, I was being an idiot about it for a long time. So they bared with me through a lot of crap that was probably hard to watch for somebody who knows what they're doing and was never once rude or, you know, like anything was overwhelmingly positive throughout the entire thing. So that's an advantage. That's that's a good point. That I say NixOS users are annoying, but it's not because they're like terrible people, like or push. They're not. Most of them aren't even pushy about. I mean, the guys in my Nix in my Discord server are pushy, but that's just because I troll them so often that they're kind of getting their payback. I, I can understand. Yeah. It, 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 if I, I have to take it, if I have to give it, so uh, I, 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 I'm fully understand that. But the vast majority of Nix user, Nix OS users, yes, they'll tell you that they use Nix, and they tell, will tell you how awesome it is. But they're also, you're right, they're much more helpful, or at least it seems, than the Arch guys or even the Open Sousa guys. So like the Open Sousa forums are full of mean bastards. They're like, no, some of that is because they're German. No offense to Germans, but you guys can be kind of well. It's not even mean. It's just blunt. They're very blunt about their things, blunt right? And direct, right? Yeah. It's just the nature of their culture. It's just the way they are. And if if you're a soft American, you can go there and ask a question. And they're going to answer it very bluntly, and it's going to come across as them being an asshole. Arch guys are just assholes. <laughs> they don't have the excuse of being well, German. <laughs> I, I think too. What helps Nick's OS a lot is too, because like w- with Arch, when someone tells you. You know, it's not for you or, you know, you can't use it. It's typically from a, you know, it's a skill issue. Like it's, it's that kind of comment. And mm, I hate that. with Nix OS, like when people tell you it's probably not for you or something, they're not coming from that perspective. They mean, if you're not interested in programming, it literally uses a programming language for its configuration. Probably not for you. It does a lot of things that if you don't care about reproducing your system everywhere or sharing your configs with people, probably doesn't matter at all like i mean if you're not a developer it's pro- like there's a lot of features there that you know have a lot of work behind them that you're probably never going to use like they like i think when nix os users tell you it's probably not for you they're being honest like it's not like a you know you don't have the skills to do this or you probably couldn't learn you know you're not reading the documentation it's not coming from any negative standpoint they're just being like realistic and honest with you like it you probably won't you won't take advantage of a lot of the features and it it has a steep learning curve that you probably have no interest in so you know and and also i like my thing too is like i love nix os i'm really really liking it but at the end of the day it's not the best linux distro out there i don't to me i don't even know which one i would call the best but Open there are Susan. so many choices out there that if you're not looking for a learning curve, all this stuff, you got plenty of other really good options that probably won't take up as much of your time configuring. You know, on the that that first week of using Nix OS is definitely an uphill battle for some portion of it. It's it's got that first week. It's got to have some uphill battles because it's just so different and from everything else you've used. Find yourself a buddy that uses NixOS. That's the best thing that you can do. And see, here's a, here's a difference between NixOS and Gentoo. Whereas on on Gentoo, there's 12 different ways of doing things. So if you're poor Matt trying to do a live stream of installing Gentoo and you have six people in the chat trying to tell you how to install things, you end up with a non-bootable system. In Nix, 
yeah, there's a couple different ways of doing things, but they're mostly compatible with each other and you're not going, you know, and most people do things in the same way, right? It's it's a documented, it's a, it's a way of doing things that maybe it's not well documented. And if you can find yourself a buddy who does use Nix or even better, just hop in Matt's Discord, hop in Tyler's Discord, there's literally a swarm of NixOS users there that you just mentioned NixOS and they're like, hey, did you say NixOS? I'm here. How you doing? How you doing, friend? Well, uh <laughs> And I mean, to be honest, if you're interested in Nix, my Discord is probably the place that you need to join. Like, I will definitely say this much. We may not have Nix OS, like, core developers or, like, you know, the most knowledgeable Nix OS people around. But the one thing I will say is every person I know that's using Nix OS on my Discord server is more than willing to sit down with you when they're free and help you, like, find out what the problem is, address issues. Uh, I will say my discord is extremely helpful for figuring out any issue you might run into on Nix OS. So might be worthwhile to join if you're, if you're looking for Nix. Link is in the chat, by the way, for Tyler's discord. All right. Yes. I I'm actually doing, you know, the hosting duties. I'm, I, I can be a host every <laughs> once in a while. It's all right. It's good. <laughs> anyway. So we talked about Nix. We're not going to talk about Nix again for a little while, although I'm sure Tyler will have things to talk about at the beginning of every show because he's now a NixOS fanboy, just like I'm an OpenSUSE fanboy. OpenSUSE, by the way, is better than NixOS. I'll fight you if you uh, agree with me. <laughs> cool. we'll, we'll have a fight after this. <laughs> it's definitely a better distro. distro. Hey, you want to run that's the folder and the, the user folder or where they are supposed to be? <laughs> Anyways. Let's go ahead and move on to the Nuggies of the week. And I still hate the name. I still hate the name. But anyways, the Nuggies of the week are things that we found interesting that we thought we would share. They can be apps, tips, tricks, any of those things. Although we usually always pick apps. But eventually somebody will do a trick or a tip and it will be awesome. But until that time, we have some apps for you today. Tyler, your Nuggies of the week. I think I have talked about these before. I'm not positive. But Grim and Slurp, if you're using a Wayland, com uh, Wayland, a Wayland compositor like Hyperland, anything else, you probably want to take screenshots and you don't ha already have a tool set up for doing it. If you go into my Hyperland key bindings, I have mod, I believe it's mod S takes a screenshot and yeah, it is mod S that runs Grim and Slurp, they're kind of together. You kind of use them together to select an area of the screen and then save that as a screenshot. You can do a whole bunch of different nice stuff with with these tools together, but they're very small packages and they make taking screenshots extraordinarily simple. So I like using them. There's a whole bunch of other really good options out there. So obviously... There's plenty of options for taking a screenshot, on, but I I do really like this method. Yeah, I want to talk about it for a minute. That's how I do things, and it's nice. Cool. Also, horrible names, but I do not disagree with it. <laughs> uh, someone had a dirty mind when they talked about those, uh, but uh, or <laughs> let's assume that others did, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, my nuggy of the week is something called Box Buddy. Now. <laughs> Speaking of dirty minds, get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> Box Buddy is a DistroBox GUI front end. So if you are as big on DistroBox as I am, and you should be because DistroBox is freaking awesome, but you don't like managing your DistroBoxes in the command line. Box Buddy is the tool that you want to look at. So I'm not going to talk too much about it because I do have a video already recorded that will go up sometime this week, and you can you can check that out uh, on, on the channel. But basically, just briefly, what it does is it allows you to create distro boxes, it allows you to delete distro boxes, it allows you to update distro boxes, and it allows you to view any applications that you've installed on the distro box and export them to your host system so you can launch them from your 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 application menu all without touching the terminal kind of it does open the terminal but you kind of just see it and you don't have to interact with it 
So it's really nice if you want to have some GUI front end for DistroBox. It doesn't do everything. You're still going to have to do some things from the command line. Uh, but if you want to manage your DistroBox, and one of my favorite features about it is that one of the biggest problems with DistroBox that ha the DistroBox has is that their documentation has a list of images that you can install via DistroBox. But that list is never, ever updated. Like, seriously, I don't even think that Debian 12 is on there yet. Maybe they've updated in the last few weeks, but it wasn't the last time I looked. And they just don't update that list very often. With BoxBuddy, it has a drop down of all the images that you can install from vault multiple sources. And all you have to do is just select it and it will install it. It's really cool. It means you don't have to go hunting for the image. It's just, you know, open a box buddy, name the, the distro box, and select the image that you want and the source that you want it from and install it. That's all you do. It's really cool. So if you're into distro box, highly recommend a box buddy. It's available via flat pack. So really cool. Anyway, so that is it for the Linux cast. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so in any number of ways. The best way to do so is head on over to the website, which is the linuxcast.org. There you'll find previous episodes when Matt decides to eventually update that thing, which I still have not done so. I've been too busy patching DWM and switching on window managers. How I don't have time to update a website. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, anyways, you can also head on over there and see previous blog posts, which there are more recent blog posts over there than there are episodes. I'll, I'll, I will get that updated. I promise. But anyways, you can find Tyler, who does a YouTube channel that he remembers the password for and actually has been posting videos, uh, NixOS videos, but still videos. He's at, at YouTube.com slash ZanyOG. You can obviously subscribe to the LinuxCast on YouTube at YouTube.com slash the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at Patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Tyler is also on Patreon. That link will be on the contact page on the website. I don't know what his URL is. I should probably memorize that, but I don't have it memorized. Uh, you can find all of our contact information including links to our discord servers to matrix if if i i think my matrix is is, is at least link, linked on there i doubt your matrix is your matrix matrix even still exists i hope not i, <laughs> have, uh, I, I have not touched that thing in forever i haven't either uh, to be honest with you <laughs> I, I i think when i switched from flat packs to snaps i didn't even transfer any over so there's a the thing. Anyways, you can find all that stuff at the linkscast.org slash contact. All of our stuff for, you know, Mastodon and stuff like that is there as well. You can head on over there and check out all of our contact information. Also, if you want to find some awesome merch, you can head on over to my store, which is the which is available at shop.thelinkscast.org. There you'll find t-shirts and hats and hoodies and all sorts of stuff, including the awesome t-shirt that you can't really see on Tyler right now because he's so dark, but he has a LinuxCast t-shirt actually on. It's the Nuggies t-shirt that is available on my shop as well, shop.thelinuxcast.org. Get those It's a good shirt. Get those while you can, because those are limited time only. Eventually, they'll go away. So, that's it for this episode of the LinuxCast. We record this live every Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, or thereabouts. Today, we start a little bit later than normal, but that's okay. So, you can head on over to the LinuxCast YouTube channel, and you can watch us live if you want to. The live stream does go unlisted directly after the show if you want if you missed the live stream you can always catch the edited version which will be posted monday evenings on the youtube channel and on every podcatcher you, you can imagine so if you want to get on apple podcast or whatever if you do listen to the audio version on application that allows you to leave reviews please leave us a review we'd love to hear from you on a, on the especially apple podcasts they love reviews and if you could leave us one, that'd be freaking awesome. And if you don't listen to the Apple podcast, but you have an Apple podcast like account, go leave us a review anyways, even if you don't you know, listen to us there. It could really help us. So anyways, now that I'm done begging for your help, that's it for us this, this episode. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome and amazing people, and seriously, just awesome. Could I use the word awesome more in that sentence? Don't think I could. Yes. Uh, probably, <laughs> probably should, but I don't think I could. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. <laughs>